If you're looking for a comprehensive shoulder isometric practice, this video is just for you. All you'll need is a yoga strap and a yoga block. Come join me. Hi, my name is Lauren Irk and I'd like to welcome you to Fitness Integrated Science TV. Today's video is all about isometrics and we're targeting the shoulder. Now there's a lot of motions that are, we target in the isometric boost videos that you can find in that section that deal with various shoulder planes and motions. But this video is to try to give you a comprehensive approach to treating a lot of different aspects of the shoulder. Now I'm going to be using two different pieces of equipment to create the kind of resistances that I need to move these isometrics into my body. Number one, I'm going to be using a yoga strap. I like these because they're cloth, they don't stretch, and so when I pull on them, they don't go anywhere, which is really the definition of an isometric, holding a position and creating tension there. Number two, I'm going to be using a yoga block. Now a yoga block can be any kind of block. It can be a book, it can be a, any kind of a firm pillow, but you can see I like these because I have the option of going narrow to medium to all these different ranges, right? So I could go high to medium to flat, depending on the width between my hands and what type of isometric that I wanted to create in terms of joint position. We're going to be doing things not only standing on the floor, but also standing up. So let's get started. I want you to begin by sitting on your mat and going all the way down on your back. Now when we're doing this, gravity is assisting us into laying into the floor. So if I take one of my arms to my side, we start with shoulder flexion. I'm just going to move the arm all the way up and back. Now if you can see, um, I've told you many times on this channel, I have a separated shoulder. So this for me is as much shoulder flexion as I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other hand now and I'm going to fill it up. So for me it's probably going to be the highest level of my block. And I'm going to put it under my arm so that I actually have something to move into. So I'm just going to hold this here for a moment. And just like we talk about a lot in the isometric boost videos, we don't want to shake or quiver or cramp. So I'm just very lightly pushing into it. Then I'm just going to move this all the way down to my side. Okay, so let's try that again. As we inhale, we flex the shoulder all the way up. Moving the arm out over the head, I'm just going to lightly press it into my block. Now what I want to make sure is that I'm not feeling any pain when I'm doing this and the pressure that I'm using is not very hard at all. I don't want to put a lot of resistance on that shoulder yet and then we bring it all the way down. So let's do that one more time as we inhale. We move that arm out over the head, very lightly pressing into it. And you may notice that as you go through this, your range of motion improves and then we bring it all the way down. So as we change sides now, let's do the same thing on the left. As I bring it up, I have a lot more range on this side, so I'm gonna take my block and move it down a little lower. And that's the nice thing about these blocks, is the versatility that comes with it depending on what side I rotate the block to. And then exhale, bring that all the way down. I'm holding each isometric for about five to six seconds. When I bring it up, I'm letting my shoulder elevate up into my ear, and then I'm just very lightly pressing into it here. And then exhale, coming back down. I'm going to do that one more time. Inhale, breathing, raising that arm over the head. And this actually feels really good, and that's when you know that what you're doing matters, is that when you're going through the exercises, they feel good and then exhale, we bring that back down. So I'm gonna change sides now, taking this block in my hand, and I'm gonna turn it to where I'm on the long end, pivot the shoulder to where the palm is actually facing you. Now when we take the arm to the floor, our goal is to be able to touch the ground. Now obviously some of you at home may not be able to do that, in which case you're gonna to need to have a piece of furniture, maybe behind you that you can scoot up towards. So I'm holding that there, and then picking that up, I exhale, come right back down. Rest for about four to five seconds. So again, as I'm supinated, thumb out to the side, wrist bones are side by side. I'm gonna try to stay supinated as I bring that arm over the head, and now I'm just very lightly pressing that arm into the ground. I want you to try to minimize if you can. You're gonna stick your rib cage out to some extent, but try not to make it excessive. 
generally is you have to stick that rib cage out a lot. It's probably because you're using a height that's not enough behind you. And you may want to grab something that's a little taller than the block. Pushing in again, hold, and I'm just very light here. I'm barely pushing. This is about my sixth repetition now into shoulder flexion. You could certainly do more. And then exhale, bring it down. So as we change sides, once again, I come into supination. Inhale, allowing that shoulder to elevate. I'm just going to press that arm into the floor and then lightly press into it and hold. And again, this feels so good on my shoulders. I hope it does for you. Hold and breathe. And then exhale, bring it down. And that, that relaxation, a lot of people like to just, you know, rush into the next set. That relaxation is so important. And let's do that again as we bring it up. We lightly press into the block with our hand. It almost wants to feel like your shoulder is internally rotated or something. And then exhale, bring it back down. All right, little rest there. And let's try one more time. So I'm keeping that palm up being in wrist supination, then taking that shoulder all the way back into flexion. So this is actually working into a little bit of our biceps here, but we know that our biceps are two jointed muscles. They connect from the elbow all the way up into the shoulder. So they're affected by both. And then exhale, bring that down. Now for the next exercise that I want to try, I want to think of protraction. So I'm going to bring both hands. This is where, again, the block is great because of the width of the blocks. I put my hand on either side of it. And then I want you to start by bringing the block right above the line of the shoulder. So we're at 90 degrees. From here, I want you to push your hands lightly into the blocks and allow your shoulders to roll off the ground. I want you to specifically do that. So we're training protractor muscles. Then we release it and relax. And if you want, you could even come down in between your sets. All right, so let's try it again. As I lightly press into the block, I'm rolling my shoulders off the ground. Good, just trying to create equal pressure from the left side to the right, which is very challenging, very hard to do. And then release that and come down. If you want, you could come all the way back out of it. And again, I'm moving back into that 90 degrees. Press into the block, then roll your shoulders off the ground. So we're focusing in on the, on the pec muscles, the serratus anterior, pec minor. Bring it back in and release it. Okay, so now we wanna move that arm up a little higher if possible. So as we move into that 90 degree where we were, we're taking our arms back just a little bit more. So let's say that we're at about 120. Pushing into the block, let's once again try to elevate the shoulders up into the ears. This is so good for your shoulder mechanics. Good, and then you release that down. Let's release that towards the floor. So again, as we come up, we push into the block, roll up. We're about 120 again, lightly pressing into the block to hold it. Just easy, easy. Your breathing should be soft. You shouldn't have to be gasping for breath here. This should be very gentle practice. And again, let's go up to about 120. If you can, lightly press equally both sides of the hands, then roll your shoulders up into your ears. So you're feeling this all down the inside of the shoulder and potentially the inside of the elbow as well. And release it down. Now our goal is let's try to visit whatever range that we have that's fully flexed. So on your inhalation breath, I know that my right shoulder doesn't move as far as my left. So because I'm doing these at the same time, I'm going to stop them both in the same place. So I'm lifting my shoulders into my ears, then I'm lightly pressing them into the blocks, nothing too exaggerated. And then we release that down to the side and rest. You can even be here if you need to. All right, we have two more left now. So each time that you bring your arms over your head, you may notice you have a little more. Bring the shoulders up into your ears, then very lightly press into the sides of the block. Remember that if you're shaking, it is too much. Then we release those arms down by the sides. Good. And then last time, as we inhale, let's move the arms over the head. Good, and again, gravity is assisting you, so be careful. Move your shoulders up into your earlobes, then very lightly press the palms into the block. Take a note for yourself as to whether or not these are equal or, not, or whether or not you're doing too much. And then we release it down. Now I want you to take your block and place it alongside of your body. And so if you were to take your palm 
and face it up like this. How far can you bring your arm against your body? For me, this is about perfect, right? I'm going to bring my block right along, right above my wrist, and I feel that I can adequately move my shoulder into the floor. Then when I press my hand into that block, I'm just very lightly working on retracting the shoulder. So it went from protraction to retraction, hold it, and then re-relax it. Okay, and you can do whatever you like. If you want to bend your elbow, feel free. And let's do that again. As I extend the elbow, I'm very lightly pressing the side. I'm drawing the shoulder down just a little bit, and then I'm moving my shoulder blade into my body so that I am squeezing the muscles between the shoulders and relax. Good. Let's do that one more time as we draw that shoulder down. Let's push that hand into the side of the block and very lightly just envision the inside of your scapula pressing into the spine. And relax, good. So now let's do the same thing with the palm facing up. So now as I push in with the whole side of the body, I'm feeling a little bit more traveling down to the middle part of the back as I squeeze into the side of the waist. And relax. And let's do that again as we press the hand in, let's drop the shoulder, and then as we squeeze the hand into the block, really envision the inside of that shoulder blade drawing towards the spine, like you're squeezing your shoulder blades together, which sometimes I'll do in this exercise, and then relax. And then last one as we press it in, let's very lightly press into the block, draw the shoulder down, squeeze the shoulder blade towards the midline and relax. So now let's get rid of the block, bring the arm as close to your body as you can, then if you like, externally rotate it a little bit. Now side bend just a little bit, drawing your rib to your hip, and then just look down to make sure that you are all the way attached. From here, very lightly squeeze your elbow into your side to hold it, and that's going to feel quite crampy. And relax, good. If you want to come out of side bend for a minute, you can. And let's do that again. I'm drawing my shoulder down. I don't know if you can see that. Letting my shoulder externally rotate, turning the head, and then squeezing the elbow against the side of the body. So we're holding that there. So really feel that shoulder blade drawing down and in. That's what you wanted to think about. And then release it. And then last time, we're pressing that shoulder down and in as we look towards it. So we went for retraction and protraction both, as well as flexion so far and release it. So as we change sides now, what I'm going to do is just flip around so that's easier for you guys to see and follow along. These are such amazing exercises for the health of your shoulder. So now as I take this block to my side again, I'm rotating my palm up and I'm noticing I may not have as much on this side. So if you start to notice your shoulder rolling off the ground, then I would suggest keeping your arm further away from your body. Then I would insert that block wherever it needs to be to fill up that space. So I'm slightly dropping that shoulder down, then I'm pressing it into my body so that I can naturally feel the shoulder blade coming around the contour of the rib cage and bringing itself against the spine. Then as I release, I come back out of it. Do that again, draw the shoulder down, then very lightly press the forearm into the block so that we're feeling the inside of the shoulder to hold. And release. And I can tell for myself on this side, I'm feeling a little bit weaker. So it's, it's not, it's a very fine line. If I push too hard, I can, I'm doing my third one right now. I can absolutely cause a shake in my shoulder and that is not what I want. And then exhale down. So now let's turn the palm to neutral a little bit, which is going to feel slightly different. Draw that shoulder down. And then again, I'm going to press my forearm into the block and squeeze the shoulder blade into the back of my body. So I'm truly really trying to maintain the back of the shoulder against the ground. And then exhale, relax. And this is also going to help a lot of you with neck issues as well. Again, let's draw that shoulder down, press the side of the forearm into the block, very lightly squeezing all down the inside of the scapula. 
and back down. And I'm sure you've heard the idea of, you know, squeeze a lemon between your shoulders or hold the pages of a book between your shoulders. That's exactly what I want you to do. But again, no quivering, no cramping. It's extremely, extremely gentle. I can't tell you how gentle it should be. Very gentle. Okay, so now let's bend our elbow to 90 degrees. I'm gonna draw this down. You can see how I'm doing that. Then I'm smashing it against my body. Then I'm allowing that shoulder to rotate. Turn your gaze down so that you can further shorten that. And then I want you to very lightly draw your elbow into your ribs. So you're feeling that downward rotation of the scapula. And then relax and come back out of it. Again, I'm driving my shoulders down, externally rotating, pressing my elbow against the body, looking towards it to make sure that shoulder always stays down. Notice if the shoulder wants to pop up, you're lightly squeezing your elbow into your side and bringing it through. Whew. All right, last one. So I'm moving my shoulder down, externally rotating, turning the head and pressing the elbow against the body. You should not cramp, you should not quiver, you should not be getting super tired. This should feel like, ah, oh, somebody just breathed some life into my shoulder. and come out of it. Okay, so as we bring our knees to together, I am ready to come off the floor. I don't know if you guys are. Let's come all the way back into sitting. So I want you to grab your yoga strap. So we're gonna switch our tools a little bit. Take your elbows back into that 90 degree. Now this is gonna feel very similar to where we just were. Now as we bring both of our elbows to 90 degrees, what I'm gonna do is place the palms or the up to the ceiling, so I'm in supination. Then I'm sliding my hands apart as much as possible. As I do this, I'm just gonna very lightly press outward into the belt. Now the more that you pull that belt apart, the more that you're going to feel this, for sure. So let's hold this here for a moment and breathe. And then exhale, relax, good. Let's try that again, you're at 90 degrees. If you want to, start in the middle. Then as you slide your hands apart, this is external rotation. My arms are right next to my side, so I wanna maintain some tension on this belt. Sorry for this buckle. <laughs> and then I want you to very lightly pull that apart. You, don't, you do not have to put a death grip on this. As a matter of fact, if this feels challenging for you, I would give yourself 50% less pressure than you normally would. Then relax it and come out, just release. Now elbows by your side, pulling that apart one more time. We're squeezing, feel like the bottom of your shoulder blades are literally sinking into your waist and your sternum is rising to the ceiling. Now if you like, bring your elbows up into 90 degrees while you're doing this and hold it. This is a precur precursor of our next exercise. and bring that right back down. All right, so just to get out of this spinal position, let's go ahead and bring our arms back around, place your hands on the floor, and then start to push your hands together. That's gonna bring in your protractor muscles to hold. Now just with body weight, can we come back into shoulder flexion? See how you're doing here. Does it feel any more comfortable to bring your arm over your head? Which obviously the weight of the arm is opposed to the force line of gravity and then release that back down. Do the same thing on the left. See how it's feeling over there. Do you feel any more mobility than you did? And then release it. So now let's take one of our legs in front. We're coming up into standing now. So as we take ourselves up, I want you to bring your belt into a loop. So I'm gonna give you a little tutorial if you haven't picked this up thus far on the channel. I'm gonna take my belt. Now some of these belts that you buy are plastic buckles that you actually feed it through an opening. This has always been my preference are the D-rings. It just reminds me of the 70s, but I really like these. I feel like they're easier to use and more comfortable. I put two of the rings through the belt first, then I'm gonna overlap, and as I come back, I go through one of the rings. And what that does is it creates tension on the belt. If you can do this and it slides, that's not enough tension. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this belt in such a way that my elbows 
are right next to my waist and I feel that tension there. Now this is the common problem with this is that people do this too hard. They bring their elbows in so tight. This is oftentimes done in yoga where they just try to get themselves into shoulder stand and they're just pinching their shoulders up. That is not what we want. We want less is more, right? So I'm gonna bring my elbow slightly outside of my waist, my rib cage. It's maybe about shoulder width and I'm gonna add some tension on it. Now at 90 degrees, I can feel as I press my, the outer aspect of my elbow into the band, I'm getting some pressure into abduction now. And from here, what I'm gonna do now, just like we did with our block a while ago, I'm gonna start at a 90 degree angle. Now, when I'm in this position, you see how my belt is just right above the pit of my elbow, and I pull out, I'm also gonna add a little bit of retraction. This can also be done against a wall, which is really nice. Now, when you're pressing into your strap, I want you to be very light with it, and then we exhale, and then just completely relax for a minute. Give yourself a chance to recover from that. All right, let's do that again. We flex into the shoulders. We're at 90 degrees, pressing out very lightly to hold, easy. Now I'm only gonna be doing two of each of these just for time, but you can absolutely stop the video and do more if this section really felt good on you. And then exhale back down. So let's just inch it up a little bit higher. So instead of coming into 90, let's bring it slightly above. And you're noticing that now your shoulders are elevating. Now. Truth be known, to bring your arms over your head, bringing your sh outer shoulder muscles into play is not gonna make that motion better. As a matter of fact, it's gonna feel probably not as good. Holding the block, you probably got more range than pushing out into the strap. So our goal is not to come into full flexion. So let's go again, just slightly above the line of the shoulder to hold it and just breathe. Good, and then release it coming back down and rest. So let's see if we can get a little higher. Keep your sternum lifted. And then again, as we lightly press out in the, in the belt, not a ton just yet, see how far you can go. Your shoulders are gonna be hampered by the belt. Now push out into the belt and lift your shoulders. And this is a really interesting dynamic here. Notice if each one of your arms are pulling equally, typically your weaker side will bail out and rely on the stronger side to do all the work. Just like life. And then exhale, we bring that all the way down. There's always someone that does all the work and someone that, you know, kind of slacks off. Remember back in grade school when you used to get into groups of, 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 of students and work on a project? Were you ever the one that did all the work? <laughs> Here we go. Bring it up a little bit higher again, squeezing in very lightly. It should not be cramping. It should not be hurting. Now for our last repetition, our goal is to get our elbows straight not necessarily to bring them all the way over our head. So go to whatever position you can and then see if you're bringing it up. This is another reason why you want your belt up right above or between your forearm and elbow, not between your elbow and shoulder. So I'm coming up to here very lightly pressing out into the belt and I'm feeling a lot of work in my upper thoracic spine. And then exhale, bring that back down. That felt really good, didn't it? This is gonna be our final one. Inhale, breath, pushing out and up into the yoga strap. Raise the sternum up. Feel your shoulders elevate. Don't try to drop them down here. And then we exhale, lower that down. Now, what I want you to do from here, I want you to take your belt and we move this. So right now we have a, a pretty wide circle. I'm now gonna make this circle fairly small. Then from here, I'm gonna take my arm let's just start with my right arm and i'm going to place the strap right above my elbow from here i'm taking my arm to my side i want you to bring your hand to face your body and come into shoulder abduction to about 90 degrees you could absolutely be here it doesn't matter then from there i'm going to separate my feet wide apart so that i can bring my foot right under the strap pointing this straight down now the goal here is I wanna move my arm straight up into the strap. So I can either be here or here, either one. So I'm working into abduction of the shoulder, very lightly pushing up into the strap to hold it. And then exhale back down. Now we don't need to readdress that again. We're just gonna hold that there. All right, let's try that again. As I bring my arm out to the side again, we're at that 90 degree angle and just hold that there very lightly pressing up. And if it starts to feel uncomfortable, then I would absolutely drop my arm level down a little bit. 
and then release it. And there may be some of you at home that are going to have your elbow above your shoulder, right? It really is about where your body is comfortable. Now what I'm going to do is externally rotate. So I'm here so that now when I bring my arm up and out to the side, I'm actually coming into abduction with a little bit more external rotation, which feels very different on my shoulder here. I love doing these exercises. I feel like out of all the people that I work with, shoulders are always the thing that gets beat up the most. Maintain a nice upright posture. Remember, just because we're working our shoulder doesn't mean our core comes offline. Now, if you want to go up to a higher level, let's say that I was here, I could easily readjust that. Because typically when we're externally rotated, we do have more abduction. And then exhale. So now I'm just going to let go of the strap a little bit. I'm going to come down to here and I'm taking my shoulder and I'm internally rotating it. So this is going to be a much more challenging position. If you notice, I don't have as much abduction when I'm internally rotated. So when I step on my strap, just to create a little tension there, I'm going to just go ahead and allow for a strap that's not quite at 90. So I'm just going to very lightly push up and this feels amazing on my shoulder. Oh my goodness. It's like therapy. It's like someone's giving me a massage. Very, very light. I can't stress it enough. And then I'm exhaling coming out so I don't lose the belt. So again, as I come up, I'm at 90 degrees and then I'm internally rotating, pushing up into that strap. Hold, breathing. And if you feel any sense of cramp, any sense of pain, back off the force and release it. All right, let's change sides. We're almost out of time. So as we come back to the other side, this is my bad shoulder. I've said this many times on the videos and I've had a lot of people tell me how much that's inspired them. They think, oh, fitness instructors should be so fit. You know, a lot of us as fitness instructors have beat ourselves up and we became fitness instructors because we've had to deal with our own bodies falling apart. So, so I'm going to come out to the side. This is as much abduction as I have over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place my, my yoga strap underneath my foot. I don't want this foot involved and I'm just going to very lightly press up. And this has been for me, um, a great exercise to do. A lot of times I'll do this in my house, just pushing my arm up into like a surface because it's been great to work on my abductor muscles. And then exhale, we bring that right back down. We all have something, we all have something to work with, right? Something that we, uh, a cross to bear, as they say, we all have our crosses to bear. So again, as we come back up, we hold it. I was actually playing baseball as a kid and was the pitcher and the ball went right there and separated my clavicle and of course didn't tell my parents because I didn't want to have to go to the doctor and stop playing so I just left it there. So as I've gotten older it's definitely become more arthritic so I've had to work very hard to keep everything strong in there even though I know they're never going to be perfectly symmetrical. So now I'm externally rotated and I'm going to let my shoulder come up a little higher now because it, it can and now I'm in external rotation and now I'm just pushing that straight up into abduction and the belt is stopping me. My goal is not really to get super, super high. My goal is to train my shoulder and then exhale back down. That was probably a little too high, I think. All right, let's try that again. So I'm pulling it up, 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 up here. And then I'm pushing up into the yoga strap. And I know this is good because the rest of my body is not suffering. You know, I can hold that there nice and slow. No cramping, no shaking, no quivering. Should feel nice, 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 nice. And here's the thing, after you finish this video, you should not feel beat up. You should not be sore. This should feel like you had a therapy session, which is what this is. So now as I come out to the side, my internal rotation is almost nothing. So I'm just gonna go even less. That's about it for me. So I'm just gonna push up lightly into the yoga strap to hold it, breathing without putting too much stress on my shoulder. and then exhale, bringing it back down. And I want you to observe that. Get your grid, your flexibility assessment grid from that video. I've put it in the emails many times. There's a whole assessment grid on the Facebook group. If you don't have the Facebook group, maybe you're just not on social media, email me or send me a, a message below and I will send you one. But that's something that you want to do is observe your range of motion, not only at your shoulder, but through your whole body so that you can work on your deficit. You can keep your muscular system strong and healthy. Now for our final one, I'm just going to take this guy out. 
I'm going to do these simultaneously just for time so that we have our 30 minutes and we're done. This is going to be shoulder extension. So I want you to stand on your belt. This is assuming that you have a long belt. If you don't have a long belt, then you're going to be forced to do these one at a time. Then I want you to make sure that your belt is equally long on each side. Then from here, I'm flexing forward just a bit. Now, as I move my arms up as far as possible, and if you're flexed forward, you will be able to move them more. I want you to very lightly pinch your shoulder blades back and then raise the arms up to the ceiling. So you're feeling your shoulder extensor muscles. Hold and breathe. And bring that back down. And I'm just gonna keep that same position. Five second rest, exhale coming forward again, move the shoulder blades into the back, and then once again, we're pushing up into the strap. Make sure always that each arm is pressing evenly into the strap to hold it. No shaking. And bring that back out. And I really hope that you come back to this video often. These the positions that I'm showing you today are like little golden nuggets. These are gonna keep you out of the doctor's office. These are gonna keep you playing golf and playing pickleball and playing tennis and basketball and all the things that you wanna do. And release and come out of it. All right, as we finish today, let's roll our shoulders in a nice little circle. Feel free to pause the video and do more repetitions of any of those isometrics that you liked. Let's take a nice big breath. Feel those arms just whoo, float right back up to the ceiling. Turn your head from one side to the other. And you are done, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, as always, please place them in the comments and let me know if there's anyone that I can help, send them our way. Have a great day.